Good morning, children. I hope you had a very nice week and you are all welcome to our primary power class. Can we all close our eyes and pray? In Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and our God, we thank you. We glorify your holy name that you have given us the opportunity to come and learn at your feet again. We thank you, Lord King of Glory, for protecting us and all, all members of our family. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercy. Lord, we are asking again today that you come and do a new thing in our lives in Jesus' name. As we learn today, Father Lord, we ask that you make us to be doers of this word and not hearers alone. Help us, Lord, come into our hearts, save us, sanctify us, and baptize us with your Holy Ghost. Thank you, eternal King of glory, for answers to our prayer. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Children, look at the drawing I'm holding. Yeah. You can see that the man has ugly spot on him. The spot is not nice at all. But the good thing is, I have used my rubber now to clean off the spot from the man's face. And you can see how awesome the man looks now. Yeah. So just like the man created in this drawing, we are also created by God. And he can use his mighty power to remove all the sickness. If you have headache, stomach ache, body ache, every form of sickness, God can remove it in our body because he loves and cares for us. Children, however, as God is helping us to remove all these diseases from our body, it is expected that we to use whatever God has given to us to help others. Remember, God created each of us with special skills and abilities that we can use for his glory. So the title of our lesson today is Peter Uses God's Power. Our memory verse is taken from Acts chapter 9, verse 34. Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. And our Bible text is taken from Acts chapter 9, from verse 32 to 42. I'll be reading only a few verses. Verse 33. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. 36. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by the interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and arms did, which she did. 37. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. Whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. 40. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. And turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. 42. And it was known through all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Children, close your Bible and look up. Yes. The story we just read was about when Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, visited the believers at Lydia. And there, Peter met a man called Aeneas, who had been sick for eight years. Eight years. He was on his bed. He could not go out. He could not do anything. He was just there for eight years. He could not walk. The Bible did not tell us much about this sick man except that it was in the area Peter was visiting with um, at that time. But just like our Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us, just as we have read, that P Peter had compassion on this man. And Peter went to him and told him that Jesus would make him well. And then said to him, Arise and make your bed. <laughs> what a wonderful Lord God that we serve. He never disappoints. The Bible says at once, the man got up. He could walk. He was well. He had been healed. Glory be to God. All the people in the city heard about the miracles that took place in Aeneas' life. And because of this miracle, many people turned to the Lord and gave their life to Jesus. What a wonderful testimony. Children, a miracle is something that only God can do for you. No doctor, no nurses, no surgeon can do it. Only God. Yeah. Children, the Bible tells us about another miracle that happened in another city nearby called Joppa. 
there was a woman there named Dorcas. She was a Christian who loved to do good things for many people. She made coats and other clothes for people who were too poor to buy them. Everyone in that city loves Dorcas because of her kindness and great charitable works. But sadly, one day, Dorcas got sick and it was very sad. She died. Dorcas family and friends were very sad. They cried as they remembered all her good works. They eventually sent for Peter, the Jesus disciple that healed Aeneas. When he came, he saw Dorcas' family crying and weeping. He asked them to go out and he knelt and prayed to God Almighty. Then he called to Dorcas and said, Tabitha, get up. Children, can you imagine what happened? Mm, yes, you are right. Dorcas did get up in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ immediately after she was confirmed dead. Yes, it was as if she was just sleeping or having a nap. And then she just woke up. She was alive and well again. Everybody got to know about this wonderful miracle again. And it caused many people to believe in Jesus. Children, we've learned about Dorcas. He loved, helped and served others through the work that she did. She meant a lot to people. Peter also meant a lot to people because of the work that he did for Jesus Christ. God worked through both of them, one way or the other. Peter was healing, he was doing miracles in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dorcas was helping those that are in need. So God wants to use you, he wants to use me. But it can only happen if we give ourselves to God, if we surrender all to God. Peter surrendered all to God and he was used by God. He followed Jesus to the end and he has the power Jesus has to raise the dead. Dorcas was doing a good work. He was using a talent to help others that are in need. So children, my question today is, are you willing to give all to Jesus Christ so that you can be of use to him? The key statement is, use your gifts for God and help others in need. Activities, ages 2 to 5. Help Peter find his way to Dorcas' home. Please be careful of roadblocks. Age 6 to 8. Put the words below into the correct space to find out two of God's miracle gifts. Our lesson for next week is titled, Paul Cast Out Devils. That is the end of our lesson. See you next Sunday. Good morning, everyone. Good, Good morning, morning, teacher. Hello, welcome to Answer Class. Do you know what we are going to do this morning that is different from what we used to do? Oh, you didn't tell us. Oh, uh, we're going to do a photo review. Photo review? That's lovely. Photo review. So, uh, about all the lessons you have studied for the past 12 weeks, you are going to do a recap of it. And uh, the theme for this uh, unit is pardon, prepared, and powerful. Those are the three key things that we studied about in this uh, unit. So we are going to start from lesson 92. I want you to recite your memory verses and some questions will be coming out. So I know you know them, so you recite it. Let me start from lesson 92. The title of that lesson is The Problem. The Problem. And the uh, Victory, is that a new for us? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Brilliant! That's lovely! So you can still remember. I love that. Brilliant! So we are moving straight to lesson 93. The solution. And I want Janet to recite her memory verse for us. For as in Adam, all die. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. Lovely. That's good of you. Thank you. Janet, in that lesson, what can you do? Can you remember any other thing apart from the memory verse? Um, I remember that um, there was a solution that we don't have to live our life of sin, that we can go to God and we will be changed in our life and we'll have. Uh, peace in our hearts. Thank you, thank you. And in that lesson, the key statement that we used was Jesus is my redeemer. 
Jesus is our Redeemer. Thank you all. So we are moving straight to lesson 94, titled Convinced of Sin. Every verse. Lesson 94. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me to him. John chapter 6, verse 44. Amen. God bless you, Catherine. God bless you. And in that lesson, the key statement that we use is thank you God for calling me. So we thank God because uh, in that lesson we we thought in, uh, about so many things. And part of it is that conviction is a realization of one sinful one sinfulness before God. And that it is necessary to bring us to repentance. So we are moving straight to lesson 95 now. The title of that lesson is Which Direction? Hey, hey, on. Can you try the memory verse? God bless you. Let the wicked man forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 7. Amen. Thank you. So, if I may ask now, everybody now, what does it mean to repent? Can anyone tell me? Oh, David, David, tell us. What does it mean to repent? It means repent when you don't go back to your old life. Yes. Uh, Catherine. When you were doing wrong before and now you corrected the you were doing right. Thank you. You are, you are correct. So repentance, the Bible says, Godly sorrow for sin with a renunciation of it and it is necessary in order for us to receive salvation. So to repent means to be honestly sorry for the sin in our lives. So, and Jesus is the only person that can save us from our lives of sin. Thank you. So we are moving to lesson 96 now, titled Change. I want to, ah, David, can you try the movie words for us? For the grace of God that rendered salvation hath appeared unto all men. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Salvation is the gift of God that brings forgiveness to our soul. And why do we need to be saved? Why do we need to be saved? Okay, Jenny, why do we need to be saved? So that we can go to heaven. Amen. Yeah, so that we can go to heaven. Yeah, so your sins can be washed away. So that our sins can be washed away. Thank you. Thank you. So we are moving to lesson 97 now. The title of that lesson is The Second Step. The Second Step. I want someone to recite the memory verse for me. Richard, can you try that? Well, this is the will of God, even your sanctification. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for that lesson. In that lesson, Jesus prayed for his, his disciples. In John chapter 17, verse 17, he says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And Jesus prayed for his disciples then. This was the still praying for us to, today. So we are moving to lesson 98 now. Titled, Provided with Power. Provided with Power. Oh, Zion, you to try that. Recite a memory verse for us. But he shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is coming upon you. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Amen. Amen. He shall receive power. If I ask you now that, oh, do we need that power? Do we all need the power? Yes. yes! We all need the power of the Holy Ghost. After we have been saved and pressed forward and be sanctified, then we need the power of God so that we will be able to tell others about the good news of Jesus Christ, about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. So we all need that power. Lesson 99 now. Titled, Reaching Out to Others. Thank you. We thank the memory of it. And he said to them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Amen. Thank you, Davina. God bless you. I love that. So we are moving straight to lesson 100 now, titled An Individual Call. Are you going to recite for us? The oh, yes. Can you try that? Um, of a truth I perceive that God has no respect of persons. Acts chapter 10, verse 34. Amen. Thank you. And what are some ways the Holy Spirit speaks to people today? What are, what are some ways? 
Speak prayer. Prayers. Is that the other way? Okay, then. Preachers. Through our preachers. When they preach to us in the church. Um, Patrick. Through our hearts. Yes. Uh, Michelle. Through our friends. Through our friends. Our friends that have been saved. Their lives can preach to us as well. Um, through the Bible. Through the Bible, the Word of God. Thank you. Lesson number one. Titled Youth of God. Can you try that? Thou shalt make him his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. Acts chapter 22, verse 15. Amen. Thank you, David. God bless you. And that lesson, our key verse that we use says, Jesus loves everyone. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me too. So Jesus loves everyone of us. Thank you. That's one or two now. Titled Ready for Battle. Uh, then you want to try that? You remember this? Yes. Um, put on the whole armor of God and ye shall stand against the wild of the devil. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. God bless you. So we need to put on the whole armor of God. Why do we need to put on the whole armor of God? Why? Uh, so. We can fight for Christ. So that we'll be able to fight, because the fight, the fight we are going to fight is not the fight of uh, you and somebody. No, it is a spiritual war. So that when somebody, maybe in the school, so we, we are faced with a uh, difficulty, or we have a, a challenges at home, we need to pray it until God answer. That is the war we are going to fight. And if we don't have the whole armor of God, like the helmet of salvation, like the shield, and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God we won't be able to fight the, the, the spiritual war so may God please come and help us even in that lesson we were told about feet what can we say about our feet? Uh, Jeanette? we use them to walk we use our feet to walk that sister, if you want to go and tell us that about the goodness of Jesus Christ what do we use? Uh -huh. we use our feet so may God please come and help us so we are going to the last lesson now, which is lesson 103. Uh, the title of that lesson is Reaching the Goal. How can you want to recite the memory of the Lord? Oh, God bless you. He shall that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Mark chapter 13, verse 13. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. He that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Yes, we are going to be saved because we, we are going to endure with Jesus Christ. We have started with him and we are going to end with him. And our goal is where? Heaven. heaven. We are going to reign with Christ in heaven. So thank you all for this uh, quarterly review. And we pray that God should write everything in our hearts so that we, he will make us good boys and girls. So let's pray. Close your eyes and let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for today's uh, quarterly review. We thank you that you have helped us. Lord God, we have studied all these lessons. Come and write them in our hearts. Amen. Make us good boys and girls. Amen. So that at the end, we want to reign with you in heaven. Amen. Thank you for answering our prayers. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for today's lesson. It has been good. You have been lovely and you answer all these questions. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining today's Sunday School. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.